Okay, let's put some more quantitative numbers on what it means to be high spin or low spin. Um, and this, this is important for if you want to think about uh, energies of stabilization uh, in complexes. So one value that people usually use is the so-called LFSE. So this is the ligand field, field stabilization energy. LFSE. You might also see this called the CFSE, crystal field stabilization energy. So these two uh, parameters are interchangeable. So what it is, is it's what we want to think about the stability that an ion imparts upon being bound by ligands. So if you think about a transition metal, a free transition metal ion, no ligands, is going to be, so no ligand field. And then we still have our solar D count, dn. So then if we split it up into the ligand field, uh, if we kind of, so this, let's say this ion is at the average energy of whatever the orbitals are once we have the ligand field, and then we split it up. So this is at the center of mass. We have a new center of mass, and then, then our, here's our split up. And then so our center of mass is like kind of average of all five orbitals, right? So we have five orbitals, so it's weighted because three are below and two are above. So the way it's weighted is that if you have this entire distance is delta O, so then this over here is two-fifths delta O, and then this up here is three-fifths delta O. So 0.6 and 0.4 respectively, because it's so if we're stabilized here, so this is lower than the center of mass by two-fifths. So two-fifths times three is six-fifths delta O. And then here we have two orbitals times three-fifths is six-fifths. So that, that's why it averages out. That's just kind of the overall, uh, you know, how we describe it. So the splitting, of course, is the same delta O that we talked about before. So basically, as we're trying to find the LFSE, equals this is going to be the number of electrons in your T2G. And then so this will be stabilized by 2 fifths delta O. So let's say 0.4 delta O. And then any electrons in this EG set are be destabilized. So then we'll subtract our electrons in EG, 0.6 delta O. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take this as positive for stabilization. Um, which is typically the opposite of what we normally do, but just as long as you keep your convention correct, it doesn't really matter. If you want to do this negative and this positive, I don't care. Um, so you have this term is the destabilizing because it's higher energy. This is stabilizing. This is destabilizing. And then what's also destabilizing is pairing, so minus P. And then this is P times the number of, I'm going to call it extra paired, extra paired electrons um, okay actually what I mean is the number of extra pairs of electrons so 1p per pair okay I'll, I'll explain what this means in a little bit so hopefully this makes sense right so what we're saying is that from an ion with no ligand field whose energies are at this kind of center of mass of our imaginary ligand field, uh, electrons in the T2G are stabilizing, but electrons in the EG are destabilizing, and electrons that are paired are also destabilizing. So those are, this is the energy cost of adding extra electrons. This is, uh, you know, this is stabilizing because we don't really care if we're filling the T2G set, unless we're not, unless we're pairing. Okay, so as we start filling, when I think about how what happens as we start filling, so suppose we have our D1, right? So D1, this is our free ion. So our LFSE there's only one way to fill it as we go to our EG T2G, right? So that's going to be D1 will go into the T2G set, so therefore our LFSE is just going to be 0.4 delta O. We don't know what delta O is because delta O changes. We also don't really know what pairing energy is unless we 
give you these numbers, but this is, we just have our formula. Okay. So it doesn't really change for D1. We only have one option. D2 is the same, right? We're going to fill just our electro electron over here. So there's only one place to put it. So it'll be 0 0.8 delta O. Okay. And then D3 also, we're just going to put our third electron here. It'll be 1.2 delta O. Okay. So now as we get to D4 and D5, now we have our option of doing high spin or low spin. So D4, right? So for D4, we're starting from our free ion. So one, two, three, four. And then our options are high spin or low spin. So here's my high spin. Here's my low spin. So D4, we could have 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4. So therefore, if we have kind of our, I'll, let me put a line here, and then we'll do over here, we'll have high spin, and then over here we'll have low spin. So for our high spin, what we have is we have 3 times, again, 0.4, so that's 1.2 delta O. And then we'll subtract this 0.6 delta O. So our final answer should be 0 0.6 delta O. And there's, there's no extra pairs. None of these electrons are paired. In our low spin, we have 4 times uh, 0.4 delta O, so 1.6 delta O. But then we're subtracting one pair. And this is an extra pair because in our free ion configuration, we have no paired electrons. So this will be. Uh, 1.6 delta O minus P. And then so for this number, if you want to know whether it's high spin or low spin, you need to know delta O and then P, and then you should have to calculate uh, which one is going to be more stabilized, which one has the higher number, right? So if P is very, very high, this number will be lower than the high spin number. But if P is very, very low and delta O is very, very big, then this number will be higher, so it will want to be low spin, right? So for LFSC, what we've done, for our convention that we've done for this formula is positive number is more stable. Okay, and then so the same thing will happen with D5. So we'll have uh, 3 in the bottom one, so 3 times 1.2, or sorry, 3 times 0.4 is 1.2, and then we're subtracting 0.6, subtracting 0.6 for D5. So for the high speed configuration, D5 actually has a 0 LFSE. This is 0. Boop, boop, boop. Well, the low speed configuration will have, let's see, times 0.4, so it's 2.0 delta O minus 2P. Very good. Okay. So I'll finish up over here. So here's what I mean by extra pairing. So once we get to D6, so a D6 ion in the free ion so field 3, 4, 5, 6 already has an electron pair. So then when we want to think about going into our octahedral ligand field, okay, so we have, again, high spin, four, five, six, high spin. Our low spin configuration is one, three, four, five, six. So these are our two possible configurations. So for D6, we could have, let's see, so it'll be 4 times 0.4, so it's 1.6 minus uh, 2 times 0.6, so minus 1.2. And then so this will be 0 0.4 delta O. So I'll keep you, uh, keep in mind, so in this high spin configuration, we only have one electron pair, or one, one paired uh, electron in the same orbital. But because we already had that electron, those electrons paired in the D6, in the free I configuration, we do not have to subtract pairing energy from the high spin LFSE. Okay. In comparison to our low spin configuration, we now have six electrons in the T2G set, so that's 2.4 delta O. And then here we have two extra pairs. So we already had this one. But these two are extra, so, so therefore we subtract 2p. Okay, 
So that's how we get our LFSEs. Um, I guess we'll do D7 through D8 in class, or D9 in class. And then one last thing is D10, all orbitals are filled, so LFSC is 0. OK, so this tells us about stabilization. Um, I'll give you an example in class about uh, why this is actually important. 